Kahuna. <laughs> Here today I have the Dow RC215 quadcopter. This is a carbon fiber one. And I haven't seen many 215s. I've seen a lot of 220s and 210s. But uh, this one says it's a 215. And they also spelled Dow RC wrong, but you know, whatever. Anyway, this is the quadcopter here. And I'm gonna get this thing opened up and put together. I think this one is kind of cool because it looks a lot like a ZMR250. So I think it's gonna draw a lot of interest from that. The big difference that it has is that it has a rear platform, and I can sh kind of show you on here, that kind of sits down a little bit, and that's where you can put your battery because you don't need all that room back there if you set your components up right. Well, this thing comes with a bag of carbon fiber pieces and then your, um, little spacers here and this is the camera mount this is kind of becoming a popular kind of camera mount because it allows you to easily mount your uh, board cameras by putting the lens through here and tightening it up it also comes with the anti-vibration dampeners here and it also comes with look at this instructions there's not many quad copies that come with instructions but this one looks like it has a lot of parts to it so it probably needs it anyway let me go ahead and get this thing taken out of the package and we'll start looking at some of the contents of it just to save us a little bit of time, I'll just tell you, all of these plates down here are all one millimeter thick. The bottom, the bottom plate here, the middle plate, the upper plate, these are all one millimeter thick. These little side rails, it's all one millimeter. These here, these arms are actually 2.3 millimeters. Usually I've been seeing a lot at two and a lot at three, but not very many 2.3 millimeter arms. And these arms are pretty decent. And you can see in here, the carbon fiber in here looks like it's pretty decent too. And it, it has good smooth edges on here, so there's not any rough spots. There's not even any powder yet that I've seen, or uh, dust from cutting these. So I think they look like they're in pretty good shape. They uh, There's a little rough cut right there on there, if you can kind of see it. Anyway, they're not too bad looking. I bet they're going to be all right. Also in here, it has the screws here to put it all together, the spacers and the anti-vibration things there. But this is that camera mount. And like I said, this is, this is kind of a new thing that a lot of companies have started uh, including. But it has the two little pieces. This goes around your camera and then it mounts onto here. Then it comes with these pieces. The, uh, the little nut there goes in the side here where it's actually shaped for the nut and the screw goes in this side and helps tighten it down. Then it has the two little small screws to attach the uh, base here up to your quadcopter. So here it is partially built. The screws go in through the bottom plate and then through the arm into these little spacers. And this is the top portion of it. And I was wrong, it doesn't actually drop down for a battery. It just has a enclosed area in the middle and gives you a middle plate to have more stuff in there and you can keep your ESCs inside. Anyway, you ha need to make sure when you're putting this together that you put this one with a little slot, this little, this side with the slot at the back. This side up here does not have the little slot like this does and the slot helps it line up with the uh, bottom plate down there so you can put the uh, this little doohickey in there. Anyway, I had to take this all apart because I had it all together and then I realized it was in there backward. Anyway, don't make that mistake. It took me a minute, but I figured this out. The camera mount actually attaches up here to this uh, anti-vibration plate with the two screws up here. That way it should give you a lot smoother picture in your FPV goggles when you're flying this way. It took me a little bit of time to figure this out, but that's how it goes up there. Should have read the instructions. So here's the quadcopter, it's fully assembled now. And uh, it feels like it's pretty decent. I think I thought the one millimeter plates would make it feel kind of weak, but I think because you got all this stuff stacked up in here, it actually makes it feel pretty decent. The uh, this top plate still is kind of thin, but because it's so short here, it doesn't um, it doesn't bend that much up here like I thought it would. Has these little side plates here that stick down a little bit so that you're landing on them instead of on the belly of the quadcopter, which is kind of nice. It has the four mounting holes for a flight board that could go up here on the top part which I don't know why you'd want it up there, but it also has them down here on the bottom plate so you can put it inside here with your ESCs in the back and ESCs in front. Now, uh, the only thing that I would say about this quadcopter is that I think this area is gonna be kind of a waste. If you squeeze everything in here, you're not gonna have anything in there. And so even something like this 1300 Bonka battery, you know, it's not gonna sit in there. It's gonna have to sit up here on top, maybe like this, or uh, down on bottom, but you probably want it on top. And, uh, it's just going to have that empty space there for no reason. Here's a uh, 3S1500 battery, and it's too wide to fit through these posts, and it's too tall to even fit inside there. So I don't know what you're supposed to do with this area. If you have, if you have something like a little 800 battery, 
You know, it won't fit in there either. Well, I may, might be able to squeeze it in if you try it real hard. Or you could you could try something like this little uh, 450. This would fit in there. This would give you about a 10 second flight time, and then you'd have to replace your battery because you would have over puffed it and over drained it. But I, I, I just don't get what this little area is for. I think you'd be better off if you had this frame to cut it off up here and then have your battery sit up here. And that would kind of center your uh, center of gravity a little bit better. And so when you did rolls, it should roll a lot better and it won't have the, the kind of uh, little long uh, spin, I guess, or uh, off balance spin because your center of gravity is so close to the middle. I do really like this uh, camera mount up here. I like the idea of having a full size um, camera in here and being able to tilt it as you uh, as you want. Even at, while you're at the field, you could uh, loose or tight, loosen the screw, then adjust it and re-tighten it back up. And also uh, having on the anti-vibration plate here, you're not even going to get much uh, vibration, even if your quadcopter motors are badly out of balance or anything. It also has a little antenna mount here, so if you do keep this on here, you can you can use your antenna mount there. It also has this little rear plate back here on the back that kind of, I don't know what you'd do with that other than just kind of make it look cool and give it a little bit of rigidity in the event of a crash. If you had all your electronic components inside here and you were to roll this, I think it would hold up pretty decently. I don't think there's really that much that's that I really don't necessarily like about this other than this empty area that you're going to have inside here. Maybe your uh, video transmitter might uh, not fit in there, but heck man, I just make it fit so I can keep this top plate clean for a battery mount. So here's a five inch prop. If I hold that above the uh, where the motor would mount, you can see it's clearing the uh, post just fine. There's not gonna be any problems with that. You're not gonna be able to run six inch props on this. They're gonna nail this thing, the spacer there. Weight's becoming more of an issue as uh, the FAA is now requiring drone registration for quadcopters that weigh more than 250 grams all up in the air. That's everything flying. Well, this frame comes in about 71 grams. And if you don't want to register yourself as a pilot, you need to start flying drones that, including the battery, weigh less than 250 grams. So the upper part of this frame has about 21.7, 21.5 maybe uh, millimeters of space between those two upper plates. The two lower plates here have about, if I can get this in here, about, what's that, 12 millimeters of space. And up here in the front, this is where your board, your full-size board camera should be able to fit. You have 35 millimeters of space up here in the front. So they claim this is a 215 millimeter frame. So I'll go ahead and get this lined up here fairly close on the first motor. And if we measure it up to here, you can see it comes in about 215. Wow, I actually, I actually measured this one correctly. It is a 215. Here's the ZMR250 and the Dow215. They look pretty close to the same, but if we go ahead and we turn these over and we put the uh, arms up here, now the uh, diff size difference becomes <laughs> pretty apparent. Like I said, this is a 250 versus a 215. So this is my current fastest quadcopter. This is a VDQ210. And you can see here the frame for this one is a little bit wider than the VDQ210. And if we line up these front, the side motors side to side, it's a little bit shorter than the VDQ210. These arms have holes that are cut out for 1806 motors or smaller. You're not going to be able to fit the um, larger motors on like the 2204s or 2206s because the holes are too small. You could drill them out if you wanted to and make them fit, but yeah, I think these are made for, since they're made for 5 inch props, 1806 motors should be plenty. Anyway, this is the Dow DL215 quadcopter frame. Overall, I really like this frame. I think it has uh, plenty of strength, even though they're mostly mil one millimeter plates. The uh, arms, like I said, are 2.3 millimeters. But I think these extra little side plates in here and the side plate in the back help add enough rigidity to this that it actually makes it a um, decent contender in the realm of quadcopters. The one thing I would uh, consider is cutting off this part here just so you can have this whole area for um, a battery to mount on there maybe drill your, your own hole back here in the back or mount it somehow for your uh, video transmitter back here in the back but anyway I really like this frame I like the mounting plate here uh, for the uh, for the camera and how it connects to the anti-vibration plate up here on the top I think that'll make for a lot more smooth video anyway this is the DL215 if you have any questions about this you can leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can and as always thanks for watching